We're talking about the inner heart of our personality. That is our spirit. And we're talking about that because we're trying to deal with the general question, what is the meaning of life? That is, what's the purpose in us all being here? Why do you exist? And in connection with that question, we've looked into the origin of life. And in the early days, you remember, we talked about the evidence of order and design in our universe that suggested that it was reasonable to believe that there was an intelligent, personal mind behind the universe. And then, you remember, we examined the life of that remarkable person called Jesus, who lived in the first century of our era, and examined his historicity and especially the ways in which he differed from the rest of us human beings, his ability to destroy death and to come back from being dead, and his ability to heal sicknesses and to overcome the powers of nature. And we concluded after some long examination, which you're welcome to follow in uh, cassettes of those earlier programs this year, if you write to us, we can send them to you, uh, we concluded that he was in fact the unique son of the creator of our universe. And so we began to examine his explanation of why we were here. And we found that he said we were here because our creator wanted us for a love relationship with himself. And that's why he made us like himself. And he made us capable of the same things as he is capable of, except that in our case they are finite capabilities rather than infinite. But that's the reason he put us here on earth, with certain abilities that nobody else has, to begin to develop his world according to his will. And in the process of that, his spirit and life would begin to make us like himself in our inner character as well as our outward capacities, so that we would be able to join him in the complete infinite development of the universe after this life was over on the, on the earth. And so we have come to the point where we've begun to look into his plan for the way our personalities were meant to operate. And we saw that he created us on three levels, on a physical level, on a psychological or mental and emotional level. And the one we've been starting to deal with in detail is the spirit level. The spirit is the part of you that is you yourself. It is the heart of your own being. It is the very essence of you. It is you when you are uncompelled by any external financial or social or emotional worry or anxiety. It is you yourself. And it's in your spirit that you are able to contact God the Creator. And actually what we were saying last day, you remember, was that it is in moments of extreme danger or threat of death or in the presence of the death of someone that you love very much, that you somehow become yourself. And it's in those moments that you are closest, you know, uh, to having any contact with what you would regard as the supreme being or the depths of reality. It is when you are yourself, when you are really yourself, because it's in your spirit that you get into contact with God. Now, what we completed last day saying was that your spirit, of course, can contact all kinds of other spirits besides the spirit of God. There are other spirits in the universe, and there is really a fallen angel called Satan that has sent his own spirits uh, by God's permission, admittedly, so as to check out our freedom of will and our ability to choose, there is an evil spirit called Satan and there are evil spirits that work under his guidance. And many of the so-called experiences of transcendental meditation or the experiences of reincarnation or many of the experiences of the uh, bluff sects that abound in our modern world or of the Eastern religions are simply experiences of contact in the elemental spirits of the universe who behave and disguise themselves as angels of light and pretend to us that they are God. And so you do have to watch. You may say, oh, well, my spirit, that's when I'm really myself, so I'll just be my real self. Well, in fact, you have deteriorated tremendously from what the Creator made you at the beginning. 
and because of the fall of mankind out of any relationship with God at the beginning of the world's existence, we are all monsters of uh, selfishness and of desire for our own wills. And so if you decide just, I'll be my real self, then you'll just be that old miserable hide that uh, conceals himself under that respectable Dr. Jekyll on the outside. So it's not enough just, I'll be my real self and let it all hang out and that'll get me in contact with God. No, uh, your spirit is your real self, but it takes a work of God in your own life in order to set your real self free so that you can actually be what he made you to be. And much of the error that we run into today in our experimentations with religion is we try to get in contact with God by our own power and our own ability and our own determination. And we end up with human religions of all kinds and mixtures of psychology and spirit and psychic experience that just bring more confusion to our lives rather than a likeness to God himself. So your spirit is the only part of you that can contact God, and your spirit, one of the elements of your spirit, is that it's the real you. But we need to see that the regeneration or the rebirth of that real you takes a work that God alone has done in his son Jesus and that he's able to make real in you in order for that real you to come forth. And if you try to drag it forth by your own power and your own ability, you end up usually with a monstrosity that is mixed up in a combination of Eastern religions and psychic spiritualist experiences that just complicate life and make you one of those strange characters that are not nearly as human as the realistic Jesus of Nazareth was. So your spirit is the part of you that communes with God, and it is connected up with being really yourself. Now, another part of your spirit is your conscience. Your conscience is, strictly speaking, not part of your soul or psychological makeup, but it is part of your spirit. And actually, it's the part of your spirit that is probably most alive. Now, the conscience, strictly speaking, as we said several days ago, is the part of us that makes us want to live up to the best that we know. But actually, it makes us live up to the best that we know from God himself. It is not the part of us that has a whole set of standards and morals. That usually is stored in the memory of our intellects. But the conscience is the part of us that urges us to live up to the best that we know, so that if we're cannibals, of course, we live up to the best that we know as cannibals. If we're Western sophisticates, we live up to the best that we know as Western sophisticates. But the conscience is always making us live up to the best that we know. On top of that, it is a kind of gyro compass that is constantly drawing us towards reality and towards the creator of the universe. So that often, if we followed our conscience, uh, we would be drawn much nearer to our relationship with God than if we followed all the formulae that we store into our minds and all the habits that we try to impregnate our emotions with. So uh, our conscience makes us want to live up to the best that we know. No were, well, through the third function of our spirits, which is intuition. Intuition is that part of us that just knows what we should do. It receives odd, intermittent signals from the creator of the universe by which he tries to keep us on track. Because, you see, you have a unique life, and he has a unique program for your life, and he is always trying to get you onto that. And it's through intuition of your spirit that he gives you a sense, I should be this, or I should be that. And your conscience judges you in the light of that intuition. It's always trying to get you to live up to the intuition that you've received from God himself. Now, you don't need me to tell you that your life is driven by usually anything but that. 
Your life is driven by all kinds of desires to please other people, all kinds of desires that uh, society and the media have filled you with to be successful financially or professionally, all kinds of desires connected with emotional and physical fulfillment that drive you so that most of us are driven men and driven women. We are not men and women who are guided by our intuition that is judged by our conscience because of our relationship of communion with God. We are usually little robots that are pulled this way and that by the external pressures of our lives, often little puppets pulled about by all kinds of strings. Let's talk a little more tomorrow about the way we were really meant to live by our spirits.